Hello there folks, how are you doing? It's lovely to see you again and if this is the new year, happy new year to you. So as you can see I am making a steak pie today or a steak and sausage pie but obviously the sausage is completely optional. Now, this is so popular up and down the country around this time of year, Boxing Day, New Year's Day, but obviously it's popular all year, all year round, but especially at this time of year. And we would typically get one of these from the local butcher, the same as anyone else. But I just wanted to show you how easy they actually are to make yourself, especially if you're going to use shop-bought pastry which is what I'm going to do because I hate making pastry and I'm terrible at puff pastry. So I'm using an onion. I've got some casserole steak, some puff pastry, some beef stock. I've just used oxo cubes or bullion, some beef link sausages, some flour, salt and pepper. And you might need some kind of thickener, you know, something like Bisto, Bisto Best, corn flour, anything just to thicken your gravy up. But you might not need it. And this is the puff pastry that I used here. And this was the Bisto that I was planning on using if I needed to thicken my gravy. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. This time I didn't need to. So I'm going to do my stew in my crock pot. I just think it gives you the best stew. You know, whatever slow cooker you've got, I recommend doing it in the slow cooker. So whatever you're using, you want to season and flour your beef. This is going to protect your beef as it's frying and give you a lovely thick gravy at the end without possibly needing to add anything else. So Pop your flour, your salt and pepper into a bowl. Give it a good mix together and do use white pepper. It's much nicer. To this, you want to add your beef. I just done mine in a couple of stages. Just drop it in and make sure it's well coated. I started off with a fork and then quick real, quickly realised, you know, this isn't working and I switched just to my fingers. So do make sure your hands are nice and clean if you're going to do this. And please excuse my house coat. This was the morning. So yeah, just keep dipping it in. Make sure it's well coated and transfer that to a different bowl. And you'll have something that looks like this. And this looks like beefy Turkish delight. So <laughs> this is what you're looking for. So go over to your cooker. You want a nice high heat. So medium to high heat. Pop in some olive oil. Now I didn't have any. So I've got extra virgin olive oil. Now I know it's not the best for cooking. But it's what I had. So it's what I'm using. And you want to flash fry your beef. Again, do this in a couple of different stages. Don't overcrowd your pan or it won't fry. It'll just stew. So you do want this to fry quick. So you get a nice colour on all your sides. You're not looking to, you know, obviously cook this through because it's going to cook in the slow cooker for a few hours. You just want, you know, a nice colour all over. So just keep turning over until all of your sides are done. And then once you're happy, pop it into a bowl just at the side there. Using the same pan, we're going to do the sausages. Now, you don't have to use these sausages. It's just that the pies that we get here, it tends to be beef and beef sausages. And again, once these break down, it will thicken your gravy even more. So recommended you do use them, but obviously not necessary. Once they're nicely browned all over, you just want to chop them into bite-sized pieces. I just used some scissors that I use specifically for this kind of thing. Once you're happy, pop those into the bowl with your beef. And the last thing we're going to do is the onions. So just use the same pan. You might need to add more oil. You might not. I didn't need to because a lot of oil came out of those sausages. Pop a wee bit of salt in. This is going to encourage the moisture to be drawn from your onions and help them sweat a wee bit better. So you just want to fry these on a kind of low to medium heat. You don't want to get any colour on them really. You just, you just want them nice and translucent like this. And once they are, pop them into your slow cooker. And on top of that, you can pop your beef and your sausages. And on top of that, I've got half a pint of beef stock. Like I said, I just used ox one oxo cube. So do this in low for about six or seven hours. I actually done mine on high for four and a half hours. And it was maybe a wee bit overdone by then. So around about four hours, I would say, is perfect. Now, obviously, it depends on what kind of beef you're using. I used a really nice beef from the local butcher. You know, it's ultra tender. But if you're using a supermarket beef or maybe a less, you know, a cheaper one, shall we say it, you might need to give it a wee bit longer. But mine took, I would say, just over four hours and it's absolutely delicious and as you can see I didn't need to use any additional thickener I felt this was thick enough 
and that beef is just falling apart tender. So this is what I was looking for. Now to keep it completely traditional, I'm going to use a steak pie ash it or this aluminium tin. This is ultra traditional but you can use any pie tin you like and that is the measurements on the screen there. So just pop your pie mixture or your beef and your sausages and your gravy into the pie tin. Just give it a wee sugar and shake and make it nice and smooth. Now you don't want it above the rim of your tin because we're going to put the pastry on. So just roll out your pastry as thin as you like and then just pop this directly on top of your pie and then connect the top, of the top of the pastry to the edge of the pie tin with your thumbs. Cut away the excess with the back of a knife and you will see it comes away really easily there and it's lovely and neat. This is so therapeutic. I love doing this. And that's what you should have there at the end. It looks ultra professional, but it's so easy. And the last thing you want to do is poke a wee hole in the top to let the steam escape. Or you could score the top, you know, with your knife. It's up to you, just as long as there are wee air vents to let the steam out. Now you want to beat one egg, pop a tablespoon of water in there to make a glaze. Brush that all over the top and pop it into the middle of your oven, probably for about half an hour until it's nice and golden brown like this one here. Now, this is actually coming across a lot darker than it was in real life. In real life, this was much paler. How bizarre is that? I think uh, in, in the coming year, I think I need to invest in a proper camera because I do just use my iPhone and the colour sometimes is a way off, which, you know, it can look fine sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. So yeah, that's it ready. So all you have to do now is serve. So sometimes we'll have some potatoes and some vegetables. This time it's Brussels sprouts and that's the stew there. And we just pop the puff pastry on the top. And you could have additional gravy with this if you like. And also typical in this country would be to have chips and some peas and carrots. But whatever you decide to use, you know, it's going to be delicious. But just before I move on, I wanted to say, as usual, a massive thank you to the supporters of the channel over on my Patreon page. And I should be over there a lot more. So thank you for hanging around, guys. And also the channel members here on YouTube as well, because there's been some new members coming on board recently. And thank you all for watching. You know, and if I don't see you, have a wonderful 2022. I cannot believe we're just about into the new year. I mean, this is New Year's Eve, and I just think the year has disappeared. So thank you all for your support throughout the year. You know, it does uh, it does mean ever so much that you're here and still liking what I'm doing. I mean, that's three years now I've been uploading videos to YouTube and it's just disappeared. It's gone in the blink of an eye. So I would say, because I got a lot of messages as well, folk asking, oh, how do you start a channel? I really want to start it, but I'm not sure. Just go for it. You know, life is short. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. You know, and if you do it and it doesn't work out, then at least you'll know. But I think the worst thing or one of the worst things is the, in the world is not knowing, you know, how something would have went had you given it a go. So highly recommended. Give anything a go. So until I see you next, take care of yourselves, guys. And bye for now. Bye now.